Hello, everybody. I'm Jesse Waters, along with Judge Jeanine Pirro, Juan Williams, Lisa Booth, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. Brett Kavanaugh firing back against sexual misconduct allegations in an exclusive interview with Fox News. You'll hear from him in just a moment. But first, we want to get you caught up. The Supreme Court nominee blasting what he's calling a last-minute character assassination while adding he won't be smeared and intimidated into withdrawing. This comes as a second accuser has come forward accusing Kavanaugh of sexual misconduct during a party when they were students at Yale. The woman, identified as Debbie Ramirez, is admitting to The New Yorker that she's not certain it was Kavanaugh at first and acknowledges there are gaps in her memories of the evening because she was drinking. Ronan Farrow, who co-wrote the piece about the second accuser, explains more about her uncorroborated claim. At first she wasn't sure this was Kavanaugh when you first came to her last week, and then you write, after six days of carefully assessing her memories and consulting with her attorney, she did become confident that it was him. You know, a lot of people and George, I would say that that's extremely typical of these stories. When you're dealing with trauma, alcohol, many years in between, I think that the more cautious witnesses that I've dealt with in cases like this uh, very frequently say, I want to take time to decide. I want to talk to other people involved. I want to search myself and make sure that I can affirmatively stand by these claims. Farrow also causing controversy when explaining why Ms. Ramirez decided to speak out now. She came forward because Senate Democrats began looking at this claim. She did not flag this for those Democrats. This came to her to the attention of people on the Hill independently. And it's really cornered her into an awkward position. That's why she took time to think about this carefully. You know, she said point blank, I don't want to ruin anyone's life. Uh, but she feels this is a serious claim. Um, you know, she considers her own memories credible. And she felt it was important that she tell her story before others did without her consent. Here's what Brett Kavanaugh told Martha about these accusations in her exclusive interview airing tonight. The truth is I've never sexually assaulted anyone in high school or otherwise. I am not questioning and have not questioned that perhaps Dr. Ford at some point in her life was sexually assaulted by someone in some place. But what I know is I've never sexually assaulted anyone. Okay, Judge, what do you think about the process with which this woman's story came out? So she's reached by Senate Democrat staffers, and then I believe maybe she's, she's coached or massaged by lawyers and Democrat activists into remembering what she believes was a sexual misconduct a situation all about 35 years ago. Is that... To you, does that strike you as strange at all? You know what strikes me as strange? That you have Ronan Farrow, uh, who had a pretty good reputation, uh, who now comes out and says, well, you know, based on my experience, it's not unusual to see what's happened. Ronan, you're wrong. Based on my experience, 35 years in law enforcement, creating a sex crimes unit, trying rape cases, listening to complaints, you don't have someone say, I need six days to figure out who it was, and then need to consult with their attorney. They usually Usually at that point, if they if they if they believe that there was some kind of sexual assault or misconduct, they know who did it, and the six days are to decide whether or not they want to go out and tell the story. She says she came out with this because she wanted to tell her story before someone else does. Here's the bottom line: if you can't even find a corroborating witness to confirm what you're alleging occurred with Judge Kavanaugh, well then who else are you worried about telling your story? Because there is no story. But I can start with due process if that's what you want. It's nowhere near these delayed Democrat complaints. So Juan, if you have no witnesses to the alleged misconduct and then you were calling around some of your friends back at Yale on the phone and saying, you know what, it may have been Kavanaugh, it may not have been Kavanaugh, do you think it was Kavanaugh? I can't quite remember. And then another female associate of hers, her best friend said, she never told me anything about this. Does this tell you that maybe she might not have it exactly right about specifically Kavanaugh? Yeah, it does. I, I think that she's saying of her own volition that she wants to be sure, that she thinks it's such a serious allegation, that she took time and that she is putting all of her doubts out in public. 
She's not trying to say, oh, I'm certain when she's not certain. She's saying, I'm not clearly certain I was drinking. Okay. So I think that's pretty straightforward. Now, Ronan Farrow says that he considers what he did a high level of evidence, here I'm quoting, uh, and says that direct accounts from people who, told, who she told right afterwards that this had happened with Kavanaugh. That's what Ronan Farrow says. So he says he applied that standard and in other stories that he's done with similar uh, instances of sexual harassment or sexual misconduct, he says this has proven to be uh, ironclad and a good way to do it. So he considers oh. it a high standard of journalism. I didn't okay. know that that's w the way he went about it. I thought it was he found someone that had heard something like that had happened, not that this woman had told a friend about it afterwards. Well, also, the New York piece says that they have not confirmed with any other eyewitnesses that Kavanaugh was president of the party. The New York Times, president of the party, New York Times reached out to several uh, dozen individuals trying to corroborate the story, could not, even reported that Ramirez herself was calling people, asking if they could recall this incident from happening. Well, I think it's pretty clear to everyone what is going on now. Look, the Me Too movement has created this environment where we are coerced to simply believe a woman because of her gender. Democrats are taking advantage, manipulating that environment, and now weaponizing these uncorroborated uh, accusations as a political tool to clobber Judge Kavanaugh with, and it's disingenuous and it's dangerous. And quite frankly, the New Yorker should be ashamed that they ever ran the story to begin with. So, Greg, if you look back in the weekend, uh, one of the alleged witnesses with Dr. Ford, female, good friend, came out and said, I'd never heard of this, not sure about the party, don't know anything about this. And then you have a second alleged victim come out. What is the pattern telling you right now? Well, I thought that, I mean, Diane Feinstein could run an airline with that kind of timing. <laughs> <laughs> because it was perfectly timed. You had a longtime friend and fourth person mentioned in the story, has no recollection. Boom, that was like a Saturday, Sunday, you had the new accusation. What worries me in the big picture is we're shifting the meaning of the word corroboration before an accusation would require corroboration, which meant, you know, witnesses and evidence, which the Ford case seemed to lack. And now this other one actually seems weaker than Ford. So now you corroborate one allegation with what? Another allegation. Mm -hmm. So what happens is the media is less inclined to actually dive deep into the story. Instead, just pile these things. So, well, it must have happened because now it's quantity, not quality. Well, both, there's, an, there's an additional point. I have never seen anything like this in my career in over three decades. I've never seen so many repressed memory cases in my life, especially against one guy. Yeah. So the question is, if there's something uh, awry going on, was there hypnosis? Are they using confabulation? And I don't want to get into the weeds here, but you know what? This is the kind of thing where they have a right to true cross-examination. But the Democrats don't want true cross-examination because they want Kavanaugh to go first. How does a defendant or the accused go first when he doesn't know what the accusation is? How is a defendant able to rebut and present a defense when the complaining witness doesn't give a bill of particulars as to what happened? I mean, this is so backwards. It is so obviously well, then let's, uh, let's, an attempt. Yeah, well, let's, 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 let's go with what you're saying. Good. Let's have the <laughs> FBI. I think she's okay no, with that. Let's no. have the FBI come in and say, here is a fact basis that we can all agree on. And that's what they're calling for. Okay, so let me and ask you this one. No, let me just say, you have a situation here where you just described, Judge, the one set of facts coming from one person, another set of facts coming from another. Generous How, okay. to call and then yeah, she okay. says, she says the okay. party occurred. He says, I wasn't at that party. No, 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 he no, said, no. She says, Let I don't even know you, when I the party was. How can he deny that he's at a party? That she hasn't identified. Well, first of all, let me let me explain something. When she says something, he has the right to know specifically what it is. Okay. But in the end, there is no way you can even consider bringing in the FBI. And my question to you is a very simple one. Right. Everybody's talking about, let's bring in the FBI. Well, why the hell haven't you asked the SB, FBI to get involved? Why did Diane Feinstein sit on this for six weeks? Why did she well, sit she on anonymous. it for 36 years? She was, 30, wait she minute, was wait not. They wait knew who she was. No, no, no. no. She was you anonymous. Anonymous. And here's the thing, I, in this response to something you were asking yeah. about, Jesse, I think in this case, when somebody is being nominated for the Supreme Court and suddenly you have all the world's eyeballs fixed on this guy, now 
They, they're going to fly spec him. I don't care who you are. That's a fact. And so suddenly a lot of people who knew him, a lot of people had questions. Remember, in this second case, that woman wasn't coming forward, the woman at Yale. How did they the find her? The Democrats heard they find stories her? How about did the Democrats find her? Well, then where is the corroborating witness no. who can confirm Fine. the story that Let's they say, say they I'm, heard from someone? I'm with who you, is Judge. Someone Let's out send the it. FBI in. That's no, what they do. FBI they do doesn't do checks. these cases, and, and that's why what, they have an answer. I'll tell you FBI. what's really interesting no, going on today. No, what's interesting is that this is all confusion what's and right? all smoke and No, no, but what's interesting is that Martha McCallum tonight is going to have Kavanaugh and his wife on her show. To me, this is like, wow, you mean a guy who's up for a Supreme Court nomination decides it's important to take a break and do TV? I think he's trying to why. defend himself. No. And we do have some Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You can't, you can't smear a guy for trying to defend himself. There is no due process no, no, what I'm saying is, at all for this guy. No, what I'm saying is, boy, did you see the Fox poll? The Fox poll indicates now, now more, you, more people you, believe Ford than believe Kavanaugh. You, well, gee, what well, a surprise after what's been done to him. Look, if allegations uh -huh. are enough, without witness or without evidence, is you should worry about your husbands, again, your brothers, your sons, and your fathers. And, and yourself. To, yes, and you, there needs to be a new women's movement. Call them the mama bears, because they're coming for your sons. All Can right. you be a part of it if you're not a mom? Yeah. Wait, by the way, you know what's going to happen is... Don't exclude what, me, you, Greg. No, but you know what's funny? You know what's going to happen? What? Because you're not, you can't nominate men anymore, you know who's going to be the Supreme Court justice. Oh, yeah. Judge Piero, yeah. you're next. No, <laughs> the justice. Let me tell you, all, all right, I'd like judge, to do is question a... the two of them. That's all, right. all I want to do. All right. <laughs> More proof that the facts on Kavanaugh don't matter to Democrats. The latest left-wing smear ahead. Plus, Martha McCallum joins us to preview her exclusive interview with Brett Kavanaugh and his wife. I was never at any such party. The other people who are alleged to be present have said they do not remember any such party. A woman who was present, another woman who was present, who is Dr. Ford's lifelong friend, Amen. has said she doesn't know me and never remembers being at a party with me at any time in her life. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh denying allegations against him in an exclusive Fox News interview, while at least one Senate Democrat appears to admit that the facts don't matter. Doesn't Kavanaugh have the same presumption of innocence as anyone else in America? I put his denial in the context of everything that I know about him in terms of how he approaches his cases. He has an ideological agenda, it's very outcome driven. It and sounds to me like you're saying because you don't trust him on policy and because you don't him believe him when he says, for instance, that he does not have a, an opinion on Roe v. Wade, you don't believe him about this allegation about what happened at this party in 1982. Is that fair? Well, without the, this is why it is so important that there be at least an investigation so that there's some uh, effort at collaboration. Greg, effort at collaboration. I think it's called corroboration. Yeah, there you go. But I'll let that one yeah. go. Well, listen, you've got, I gotta ask a question. <laughs> you've, got this, you've got this senator saying that she doesn't believe him in the context, context. of his decisions. Right. What is she trying to tell well, us? Well, the mask dropped there because she's put, putting the denial in context means that she doesn't, he doesn't deserve a benefit of the doubt because of his politics or the, his potential policies. For example, if I said I was I mean, it would be like me saying, I'm skeptical of progressive feminism, so I don't think a progressive feminist should get due process. I would, that, that's nuts. It's scary how political war warfare is redefining how we interact with each other. We're not, as pe we're not one people anymore. We are now tribes, and this is not going to end well. Right. It's not, it's not going to be Republicans versus Democrats or men versus women. It's going to be everyone for themselves because <laughs> accusa accusations and allegations require no proof, no evidence. That means I can do it to anybody I want. Yeah, right. but and we Lisa used to live in a country where, you know what? We were Americans, and you could, in fact, go to the courts and yes. get a fair hearing well, and we expect also, impartiality. And Lisa, that's where but I want to go with case, this. Uh, in this case, Orrin Hatch has already said, forget about it. I don't care what she has to say. I know, let her say I what she I don't know if he said, I don't care what oh, she yes, has he to did. say. Oh, yes, he did. That's what Orrin Hatch said. He said he's going to vote on But let me ask you this, Lisa. Okay. In a he said, she said 
Does anyone win? And then how do you, you know, the scales of justice are like this. Preponderance of the evidence is slight. Beyond a reasonable doubt is like that. That's the world that I've dealt in. Now it's like not even preponderance of the evidence. If it's equal and he said and she said, she wins. Well, of course. I mean, we've set up this impossible environment for men with the Me Too movement. We've also used to live in a world, one where you had the presumption of innocence. And Senator Hirano basically admitted that she's not, she's denying Judge Kavanaugh that simply because she disagrees with his judicial philosophy. But in all honesty, she's the only Democrat that is being honest here. She also basically admitted that she's anti-men because she said men should just shut up as well. She's fundraising off of this as well. So at least she's the only one that's showing what the Democrats' cards here is that it is political. Uh, and they've been trying to take down Judge Kavanaugh from the very beginning, and now they are essentially weaponizing allegations that have not been corroborated to try oh, to do that. Well, the other side to that is Republicans are trying to push through Judge Kavanaugh, you, and, you had president, and you had President Trump tweeting, you know, uh, let's forget about whatever uh, this woman had to say, and you have people now like Susan Collins saying, I'm appalled that well, the president would say such a thing about a woman who has a serious look, charge. Look, can you deny, Juan, can you deny that we were right at the 11th hour, it was about to go for a vote, and they now say, they come up with this woman who doesn't know anything, doesn't have a corroborating uh, witness, says she can't fly, she's got to drive across the country, and now the second delay is this, sec come on, I mean, how much of a delay, and uh, we got to go to the FBI. Why doesn't someone go to the FBI? I've been listening to this for three weeks. Go, get it done. Oh, you wait, I thought you were saying that you oppose the FBI looking at this. That's because they won't look at it. They <laughs> don't do no, local no, 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 crimes. No. If you're they friend... don't do Excuse me. sex crimes. Excuse me, they do Supreme Court nominees. They, they do, do background yes, checks if you're that's over right. 18. Okay, he so it's a background. 17. This is a background check. <laughs> they did six of them. They didn't well, know I'm about this saying, woman. And if the, Dems, is, so if the Dems found this woman, the okay, Dems. and they had to go, they found the second one, right. Ramirez. Oh, the second. Why didn't the FBI find her in the best six background well, checks? Remember, with the Anita Hill case, again, the Democrats were the ones Jesse. who kind of forced her out into public. <laughs> I got to get your opinion. I yeah, the voice of reason, I think, needs to step in here. <laughs> I, I would only say this. If, if you go to a party with your best friend, and it's a house party, and something happens, and you don't tell your best friend about it afterwards, and then the person, your best friend, who you say was at the party where this incident happened, says, I was never at this party, and I don't even know Brett Kavanaugh, and I've never even really met Brett Kavanaugh, and everybody else that you name was at the party has never met you or doesn't know you or doesn't know anything about this party. Doesn't that make your story a little bit suspicious? And then you bring on to your legal team, Andrew McCabe's lawyer. You what does what that I, say about how politicized this is? You done? are the Democrats a have reasonable man. Destroyed <laughs> you can this confirmation sit on progress. any jury on any case. What will happen when Trump and Rod Rosenstein <laughs> meet face to face this week? The president explains next. <laughs> Welcome back. We're going to have more of Martha McCallum's exclusive interview with Brett Kavanaugh in a moment. But first, some other very big news today. Rod Rosenstein set to meet with President Trump on Thursday after a day of wild speculation as to whether he will resign or be fired. The president addressing it earlier. We'll be meeting at the White House and we'll be determining uh, what's going on. We want to have transparency, we want to have openness, and I look forward to meeting with Rod at that time. Rosenstein expect facing intense scrutiny over a stunning report on Friday that he suggested secretly recording the president. He's talked about apparently invoking the 25th Amendment to try to remove Trump from office. Rosenstein has denied those claims. Judge, what do you make of it? I got to tell you, you know, this guy Rosenstein, you know, it doesn't matter. To me, the New York Times article really doesn't matter, Juan, mm -hmm. because the first time I heard that he wrote the memo telling the president all the reasons why Comey should be fired uh, and now is in charge of the investigation that includes as part of it that the president may have obstructed justice in the firing of Comey. Once I found out that Rosenstein had signed one of the FISA uh, uh, applications uh, and one of the 
recurring applications, which required additional uh, information. And then you find out that Rosenstein, when he appears before Congress, has this smug look like, yeah, we'll get you the reports. We're, we're working on it. We're working on it. And then all the reports are redacted. I say to myself, self, what is this guy <laughs> doing controlling this investigation? He should be fired. But now I don't want him fired. I don't want him fired. Okay. I don't want the president firing him. You don't I want the memos to come out. I think that there's something in the memos. But Rod Rosenstein's also the guy that laid out the case for firing James Comey and then appoints a special counsel to look into things like potential obstruction of justice. So that is kind of questionable to believe or to that's questionable in itself. But I would say that there's been articles and you know discussion that perhaps he was joking and that with the New York Times article. But I would say, does it really matter? I think the bigger problem is the fact that that could potentially be true. I mean, you look at things like the New York Times op-ed. You look at the FBI text messages about stopping President Trump. You look at the fact that the FBI used a Democrat opposition uh, research to obtain a FISA warrant against Carter Page. So I think it's troubling that it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility for Rosenstein to be telling the truth and so for it to not, not have been a joke. So, Jesse, uh, today, Rod Rosenstein met with John Kelly, the chief of staff. As he was going over to the White House, the thought was uh, he's going to be fired. And then there came the report, oh, maybe he's not going to be fired, but he's going to resign in it to prevent himself from being fired. Then they have the meeting, and now we hear, no, it's simply going to be a meeting on Thursday with Trump. How's it? What's going on? Thursday is going to be a big day. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till Thursday. I honestly don't know what's going on. I don't think anybody knows. I don't know if he got set up by McCabe. I don't know if he got set up by the White House. I don't know if he got set up by someone that wants to set a trap for the president to fire Rosenstein. I don't know, but I do know this. Rosenstein is not a good faith actor. He's been playing this Game of Thrones stuff with the White House and everybody for quite some time. When you play that game, sometimes you get knifed. Let's remember, he signed all these FISA warrants. He was the one that oversaw the firing of James Comey. Then he oversaw the obstruction case about the firing of James Comey, total conflict of interest. And he's not giving any documents that the House Judiciary Committee wants. So he's been stonewalling throughout the last year and a half. It's time for him to go. And if he does go, the next person in succession, Solicitor General Noel Francisco, who seems like a real straight shooter. He's been very critical of James Comey for giving Hillary Clinton the kid glove treatment. And I have a lot of respect for this guy. And if Rosenstein does get dropped, then this guy, I think, is a good replacement for the time being. So, Gregory, uh, apparently the president was polling his staff on yes. Friday when they were going back and forth traveling to Missouri as to whether or not he should fire yes. Rod Rosenstein. What do you say? That's normal. A CEO often asks his staff for questions about stuff. That's what bosses do. It's a normal behavior. I'm with the judge, though. I don't think he should be fired. And let me I have a different reason for it. I think whether he's joking or not is really important from my perspective. As someone whose life is regularly punctuated by events where I have to explain to people... Honey, I was just being sarcastic. I have to defend Dayrod on this one because the thing is the possibility that his comments were, were sarcastic, that can be said about tr everything that Trump says. People get really upset about Trump because they took him literally when he was just making a joke. So the same thing is now happening to Rosenstein, saying to Rosenstein, whichever. Which one is it? Which is one it is it? Rosenstein. 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 That's but, that's but, but, but the point is, tell us. But the, but the bottom line is this, people who condemn anonymous sourcing of the, t of the Times op-ed and now embrace this anonymous sourcing or being hypocrites, I say it was likely a sarcastic remark because I'm I, a guy who makes sarcastic remarks. Yeah, but, but you know what? Context, There's no evidence. What context Ex would that need to have that comment? Yes. What do you want me to do? Tape them? Have you ever said okay. something like that to you to a spouse? What do you want me to do? And you say this thing right. that you didn't mean, and then you have to go buy flowers. It sounds like <laughs> there's a lot of experience right. here. No, there is. <laughs> Believe me, if you're a sarcastic person, you should always side with the, well, the, I, with the excuse that it was a joke well, because it always is a joke. Well, you know what's incredible? is I, I generally don't agree with these guys, but I think I agree with this for a different reason. I don't think there's any evidence to say that he actually did anything. Uh, see, when oh, Ron, oh, Ron, oh, oh, Ron Rosenstein, uh, I know I'm right. Yeah, yes. all right. Brett Kavanaugh speaking out against sexual assault allegations in an exclusive Fox News interview with Martha McCallum. Martha's here next with a preview. The best. Welcome back. In an exclusive interview airing tonight on The Story, Brett Kavanaugh and his wife, Ashley, sit down with Martha McCallum 
to address decades-old allegations of sexual misconduct against the Supreme Court nominee. Here's a preview. We're talking about an allegation of sexual assault. I've never sexually assaulted anyone. I did not have sexual intercourse or anything close to sexual intercourse in high school or for many years thereafter. And the girls uh, from the schools I went to and I uh, were so friends. So you're saying that all through all these years that are in question, you were a virgin? That's correct. Never had sexual intercourse with anyone in high school? Correct. And through what years in college, since we're probing into your personal many life years, here? Many years after. I'll leave it at that. Many years after. Wow. All right. Well, that entire interview airs at 7 p.m. Eastern tonight here on Fox News. And Martha joins us live from Washington, D.C. Hi, Martha. Hi, Lisa. I'm looking forward to this interview. I have no doubt that it's going to be phenomenal. So, Martha, my question to you is, look, this is kind of a risky strategy for him and his wife mm -hmm. to sit down with you, Look, especially ahead of Thursday's hearing. Democrats are looking for anything to use against him, anything he says to use against him. What's the strategy behind him sitting down and agreeing to it? Do you know why he yeah. did the interview? You know what? That was my first question to them. I wanted to know what prompted them to speak out prior to Thursday's hearing. And, you know, I really he said he wanted to clear his name, which he said, you know, many times. And he looks forward to doing that on Thursday in the hearing, if indeed it happens on Thursday, which I think uh, everyone feels there could be some twists and turns before that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was sort of an effort to kind of, you know, kick the tires and get the tough questions and go through it and see how he stands up. Uh, because we literally asked him every single allegation. I mean, we did not hold back in terms of the detail and the graphic nature of these allegations against him. And I wanted to hear his answers. I wanted to ask him those questions in front of his wife. I asked her, you know, did you ever become doubtful? or angry when all of these allegations came forward? Did you ever look at him and wonder? And she says she did not, that she has never wavered in her support and that she believes that these allegations are lies. Well, all right, well, we're gonna take it around the horn, Jesse. I'm just kind of still reeling from the soundbite we played at the top there, Martha. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Democrats have played the race yep. card, the gender card, and he's now playing the V card. He <laughs> is a virgin, and that's the defense he's going with and was a virgin mm -hmm. until, I guess, his you know, early to mid-20s. What kind of impact do you think that will have on this debate we're having in this country? I, yeah. I, do you think he's going to get teased now by the left? Or are Probably. they going to say, yeah, I mean, how yeah. do you think this is going to play out? You, you know, I mean, I... I, I thought it was probably a very difficult thing for him to say. My guess is that it may have come up in, you know, preparation and the discussions that he's had about all of this and in his defense of himself, he probably said, look, you know, I didn't sleep with anyone. Um, and he wanted to make that point today, which I thought was very interesting. Um, it doesn't necessarily, you know, go fly in the face of some of these allegations, which fall short of that. That's true. Um, but it does, you know, continue to paint the picture of him as someone who, uh, was very much on the straight and narrow. So, yeah, I think he's probably going to get some ribbing for it. I think he feels like it's um, something that he wanted to be honest about, and he wanted it out there, and he obviously feels like it speaks in his favor. Juan? Well, I think that the, it's pretty clear why he talked to you, Martha. I think it's these polls, the Fox polls, that clearly show there are fewer and fewer people who think he should be confirmed and who even believe him. More people believe uh, Professor Ford then believe Judge right. Kavanaugh. So to my mind, the key issue is here, how did you, Martha McCallum, uh, react? Did you come away from it feeling, you know what, I think that this guy is bearing his soul, or did you think, well, this is a political step being taken by someone who knows that he is losing political support, especially among mm. suburban women? You know, I mean, it's clear that he believes that he did not do anything along the lines of these accusations. And I pressed him. I said, you know, did you is it possible that you had, you know, a physical interaction with Christine Ford that she misunderstood or that, the, or, you know, were you ever so drunk that you forgot what, what happened one night? Because he admits in the interview that, you know, they were all drinking, that there were nights when they drank too much. So I said, did you ever drink so much that you forgot what happened? Um, and, and he says no. So I, I came away believing that he believes that, that he never did anything uh, along the lines of what he's being accused of. And I also went into the Michael Avenatti claims, which are you know really egregious as well. Um, and he claims that he was never at a party where anything along those lines happened. 
Um, so he's really far out on a limb here in saying, you know, unequivocally that these things didn't happen. He's not saying, you know, I had a relationship with this woman and maybe she misunderstood or anything like that. He's saying absolutely not. So, I mean, as a reporter, I'm listening to what he's saying. I'm taking it in and we weigh it against the evidence on the other side. Judge? You know, Martha, a lot of times jurors, when they listen to witnesses or the accused, they're more focused on their visceral reaction to the individual as opposed to, you know, the, the, the testimony itself. And, and we haven't seen Dr. Ford yet. Uh, but uh, two questions. Your visceral reaction to Kavanaugh being closer to him than just a television camera. Mm -hmm. And then number two, what shocked you the most or surprised you the most about his answers? You know, I think that he is obviously, this This has really been hard on the two of them. I think he's very nervous, very pent up about all of this. And you can just imagine what this is like, you know, when you, you know, go to bed at night and the, the two of you are, are there alone and you're thinking about what you're going through with all of this, um, regardless of, of where everything lies, it has to be absolutely devastating. So, you know, I walked away feeling that he is a person who believes in his convictions and he believes that he's innocent. She clearly believes that he's innocent. She is uh, sort of, you know, a calmer center and she definitely believes that he is innocent. You know, what surprised me, um, I think that the, the virgin comments surprised me because I think that he's willing to kind of bear the, mm -hmm. you know, sort of the innermost mm -hmm. secrets to clear his name. Um, and it, it also surprised me that there was no nuance. There was no sort of, I asked him, you know, do you think, and this is a hard question to answer, but I asked him, do you think that separately from your experience, a teenager, someone who's 17, should be held responsible for what they do the rest of their life. And he said, you know, I really can't say I've, I've you know, led a good life. I said, no, but if it wasn't you and, you know, you're the judge and you're looking at someone 17 and younger, should they be held responsible for their actions? He would not answer that specifically. Mm -hmm. And I think when you think about it, um, you know, you're sort of damned if you do and damned if yeah. you don't with that question. If you say yes, you're culpable for what you did prior to 17, um, you know, then the headline becomes, you know, Judge Kavanaugh says that it's, uh, that it's okay, that nothing's off, off limits. And if you okay. say you're and not, then the headline becomes, he thinks everything you do before 17 is okay. Right. Um, so, you know, that, that surprised me. And I want to get Greg in here as well. Yeah, the permanent record is actually Remember, you used to be threatened. It's on your permanent record. It yes, exists. it's yeah. in your file. Yeah, you know, um, you brought up Avenetti, and I don't know if, if the judge wants to respond to this or do you, or, more, or you, Martha, but how I saw those tweets in there. They're, I mean, yeah. what he's suggesting is grotesque. He's yeah. suggesting gang rape. How, mm -hmm. how can someone put that forth without evidence? I mean, I, I would assume the Bar Association would be all over this. Or I mean, how can he do that? I don't, I'm, it, it, blows my mind that well, that's Well, I can, Janine can probably answer that side of it, but I can tell you that I, I asked him about that very specifically, and he was emphatic that he would, had never been anywhere where anything like that was going on. I said, what about, you know, sort of things that were happening behind closed doors at parties that you were maybe aware of, or maybe should have been aware of, that seem more innocent than they're described in these, in these tweets, um, and he claimed that he had never been at any event where anything like that happened. Now, Michael Avenatti says that he has witnesses, um, and that they have specific allegations uh, and specific facts that they can attribute him being there to. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah. OK, quickly, this kind of thing should go before the grievance committee. I've sat on them both for attorneys and for judges. Second mm -hmm. thing, uh, accusing someone of gang rape is slander per se. And uh, Avenatti ought to uh, be concerned about his law license if he isn't already because he's $10 million in debt uh, based, uh, you know, in taxes and to people. Hey, Martha, 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 did you ask, uh, the, did you ask Judge Kavanaugh if you thought, if he thought that Michael Judge, his friend who keeps writing, he's written about these mark judge drunk, mark judge all these drunken Mike judge is somebody else in in uh, high school did you ask him if if he thought that judge should testify or come before the senate yeah you know he he basically said that everyone in his life had corroborated his story he didn't uh, answer whether or not he should come before the before the court but i did ask him about the other guy who just came out roche um, who basically was his roommate at Yale and said that he found these stories to be credible, that he didn't have firsthand evidence, but that it didn't surprise him that these things would happen. Um, and Kavanaugh's interest answer is very interesting on that one. So stay tuned for that yeah. tonight. All right. well, <laughs> thanks, well, Martha, we will all be watching tonight. So thank you for being with us today. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. All right. Well, more of The Five coming up next. Stay tuned.
Anyway, uh, we're going to do some final thoughts here. My final thoughts are, I will say this until I'm in a pine box, innocent until proven guilty. And if we let that thing go and we start manipulating language, we're all going to be screwed. Everyone at this table, everyone you know, everyone at home. We're, we all live and breathe based on that one point. The, and I think... From, from the media standpoint, the worst thing that could happen for the media is to find out that nothing happened. So there you go. It's kind of like Russia collusion. Imagine that. Yeah. Nothing happened. <laughs> um, this is what I was thinking about watching that clip with Martha. How would you conduct yourself Play. if you were being smeared? And you didn't do it. If you felt you were being smeared by someone in that way. I would be in Martha's face like this. I would be so angry and so, so intensely uh, upset about the accusations and upset that it was destroying my family and, and just vehemently denying. And he came off to me a little bit, he came off sad and he came off a little bit um, soft spoken. I understand he has to conduct himself like that because he's a measured guy and he's going to be on the Supreme Court, we believe. But I don't know if he's going to have, is he going to be like that at the hearing on Thursday? Yes, I don't know how that's going to play when you're going to have a female who is is going to be up there and you know she could be very emotional and she could also be very believable thursday is huge i don't i don't know if, if that is going to play on thursday I, yeah, jesse i wouldn't be surprised if he changes on thursday because then he will be confronted with the specifics of this alleged assault all right right now you gotta admit the guy's depressed he's sad he's exhausted i understand from a good source his little girls are very upset yeah. about this the man has led an exemplary life at the citadel of the practice of law the united states supreme court and now they're bringing him down or trying to as a sex offender I don't know if I get out from under a rock. See, this is a dangerous world we're living in because you can have two women in the Me Too area make accusations with zero evidence, zero corroboration, and potentially derail someone's entire career. He's got two daughters and a wife as well. You don't think that those daughters are hearing about this at school and it's going to change the way they look at their dad. I think it's dangerous that the New Yorker ever ran a story when they said that they couldn't find someone that had first-hand knowledge that this had happened. So we're living in a terrifying world, in my opinion. And, and I just want to say, I was very open-minded about Ford from last week. I wanted to hear what she had to say, and I was willing to believe what she had to say if she came through with the facts. But when you add the second woman and you add this gross stuff that Avenatti is now doing, the timing is totally political and suspicious, and it, it ruins the original accusation in terms of credibility. Okay. So here's here's, the, here's yeah. the real deal to me, Ooh. is that you you have now Republicans up for midterm elections. I'm talking about Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Jeff Flake's not up, but I mean, you have people who are very aware of how Republicans will be seen. Do they really want to hear this woman? Or is it the case that you simply want to get her out of the way and then solidify a hard right conservative majority on the court for generations to come. I think conservatives and Republicans I don't think have to play I, carefully. I think they, I think they've, they've been in, incredibly accommodating. I don't. But they want so. a conservative court. Right. They've been accom what you just said. But they, they want a conservative. But court. they've been very are they accommodating. Gonna, you know, are they going to run that over would be her? The day a witness tells me when she's coming to court. <laughs> Who does that? He's not a One more of thing a crime. is up next. Yes, he is. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're going to do some final thoughts here. My final thoughts are, I will say this until I'm in a pine box, innocent until proven guilty. And if we let that thing go and we start manipulating language, we're all going to be screwed. Everyone at this table, everyone you know, everyone at home, we're, we all live and breathe based on that one point. The, and I think from, from the media standpoint, the worst thing that could happen for the media is to find out that nothing happened. So there you go. It's kind of like Russia collusion. Imagine that. Yeah. Nothing happened. Um, this is what I was thinking about watching that clip with Martha. How would you conduct yourself Play. if you were being smeared? And you didn't do it. If you felt you were being smeared by someone in that way. I would be in Martha's face like this. I would be so angry and so, so intensely uh, upset about the accusations and upset that it was destroying my family and, and just vehemently denying. And he came off to me a little bit, he came off sad and he came off a little bit um, soft spoken. I understand he has to conduct himself like that because he's a measured guy and he's going to be on the Supreme Court, we believe. But I don't know if he's going to have, is he going to be like that at the hearing on Thursday? Jesse. I don't know how that's going to play when you're going to have a female who is going to be up there and, 
you know, she could be very emotional and she could also be very believable. Thursday's huge. I don't, I don't know if, if that is going to play on Thursday. I, yeah, Jesse, I wouldn't be surprised if he changes on Thursday because then he will be confronted with the specifics of this alleged assault. All right, right now, you got to admit the guy's depressed. He's sad. He's exhausted. I understand from a good source his little girls are very upset yeah. about this. The man has led an exemplary life at the Citadel of the Practice of Law, the United States Supreme Court, and now they're bringing him down or trying to as a sex offender. I don't know if I get out from under a rock. See, this is a dangerous world we're living in because you can have two women in the Me Too area make accusations with zero evidence, zero corroboration, and potentially derail someone's entire career. He's got two daughters and a wife as well. You don't think that those daughters are hearing about this at school and it's going to change the way they look at their dad. I think it's dangerous that the New Yorker ever ran a story when they said that they couldn't find someone that had first-hand knowledge that this had happened. So we're living in a terrifying world, in my opinion. And, and I just want to say, I was very open-minded about Ford from last week. I wanted to hear what she had to say, and I was willing to believe what she had to say if she came through with the facts. But when you add the second woman and you add this gross stuff that Avenatti is now doing, the timing is totally political and suspicious, and it, it ruins the original accusation in terms of credibility. Okay. So here, here's here's, the, here's yeah. the real deal to me, Ooh. is that you you have now Republicans up for midterm elections. I'm talking about Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Jeff Flake's not up, but I mean, you have people who are very aware of how Republicans will be seen. Do they really want to hear this woman? Or is it the case that you simply want to get her out of the way and then solidify a hard right conservative majority on the court for generations to come. I think conservatives and Republicans I don't think they're connected. have to play I, carefully. I think they, I think they've, they've been in, incredibly accommodating. I don't. But they want so. a conservative court. Right. They've been accom what you just said. But they, they want a conservative. Court. But they've been very are they accommodating. Gonna, you know, are they going to run that over would be her? The day a witness tells me when she's coming to court. <laughs> Who does that? He's not a. One more of thing a crime. is up next. Yes, he is. Okay. <laughs> After